Right, next. External entity. An XML external entity, XXE attack, is a vulnerability that abuses features of XML parses or data. It often allows an attacker to interact with any backend or external systems that the application itself can access and can allow the attacker to read the file on that system. They can also cause denial of service uh, or could use XXE to perform a server-side request forgery, in inducing the web application to make requests to other applications. XXE may even enable port scanning and lead to remote code execution. There are two types of XXE, in-band and out-of-band. An in-band XXE attack is one in which the attacker can receive an immediate response to the XXE payload. Out-of-band, also called blind XXE, there is no immediate response from the web application, and the attacker has to reflect the output of their XXE payload to some other file or their own server. This challenge is from our subscriber only material, Happy Hacking. Okay, so we need to deploy the task. Have I got any open? I don't, so start. Oh, I do. That one's on, that one's on. Which one have I got? Which one? Just refresh it. Right, terminate. It's not that machine. All right, before we move on to learn about XXE exploitation, we'll have to understand XML properly. XML, Extensible Markup Language, is a markup language that defines a set of rules for encoding documents in a format that is both human-readable and machine-readable. It is a markup language used for storing and transporting data. XML is platform-independent and, prog and programming language-independent, thus it can be used on any system and supports the technology change when that happens. Data stored and transported using XML can be changed at any point in time without affecting the data representation. XML allows validation using DTD and schema. This validation ensures that the XML document is free from any syntax error. XML simplifies data sharing between various systems because of its platform independent nature. XML data doesn't require any conversion when transferred between different systems. Uh, syntax. Every XML document mostly starts with what is known as an XML prologue. What's that? Uh, above the line is called... Above the line? I mean the line above is called XML prologue. And is it specifies the XML version 1.0 and the encoding UTF-8 used in the XML document. This line is not compulsory to use but it's considered good practice to put that line in all your XML documents. Every XML document must contain a root element, for example, mail. Um, in the above example, mail is the root element and of that document to from subject text are all children elements. If the XML document doesn't have a root element, it would be considered wrong or invalid XML doc. Sharma underscore G underscore says. Hey, I'm Sekne Hey. Translated from German. How you doing? Smile, smile. <laughs> it's not German, but how are you doing? Yeah, I'm not bad. Yeah, we've got through the first 12 tasks, so we're doing good. Um, where were we? In the above example, we did that bit. <laughs> Future man. Um, another thing to remember is that XML is case sensitive. 
if the tag starts like two and then it ends with slash two and not by doing slash capital T, notice the capitalization of T. Like HTML, we can use attributes in XML too. The syntax for having attributes is also very similar to HTML. For example, text category. <laughs> oh, the, the text to speech. No, it's quite good. I like having um, sort of feedback because if I don't, if I'm like focused on this, I don't necessarily focus on the chat so much. So it's good to have someone talking to me. Um, so in like HTML, we can use attributes as well. So that's category equals. Uh, the syntax for having attributes is very similar to HTML. In the above example, category is the attribute name and message is the attribute value. Mm -mm -mm. Full form of XML. Blah. That's not even a question. It's full form of XML. Do you mean, do you mean the words? Extensible markup language. Right. Is is it compulsory to have an XML prologue in the document? No. It's best practice. Can we validate XML docs against a schema? Yes. Why? <laughs> it kind of breaks having three stars when it's a yes or no answer. But yeah. Yes, you can validate against the schema. How can we specify XML version and encoding in the document? You specify it in the docked start, the prologue. DTD. Before we move on to start learning about XXE, we'll have to understand what DTD is. DTD stands for Document Type Definition. A document type definition defines the structure and the legal elements and attributes of an XML document. Let's try to understand this with the help of an example. Say we have a file named note.dtd with the following content. So we have a note, an element, another, and, and then da, 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 more elements, more elements. Now we can use this DTD to validate the information of some XML document and make sure that the XML file conforms to the rules of the DTD. So below is a given XML document that uses note DTD. So we know that note doc type, so we've got that, that rather, then it's got two from body or two from heading body. So two from heading body. And then it separates the elements. So you've got two from heading body. Uh, now let's understand how the DTD validates the XML. Here's what those terms are used in the note. So bang doc type this determines a root element bang element defines the node elements the, that must contain those elements so it's like an array of of the elements uh, da, 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 da. element 2 defines the two element which is a type of pc data from is again a type of pc data Heading and body, again, PC data. PC data means passable character data. So how do you define a new element? Uh, right like that. <laughs> Is it just going to be the bang? I guess we want that in there as well. How do you define a root element? The exact same way. Oh no, doc type. 
There we go. And then how do you define a new entity? That's not. That's not what? Is it literally entity? So why did they not include that information in there? Define a new entity. So go away. Entities are used to define shortcuts to special characters. Entities can be declared internal or external. So you define it caps entity. Entity name and the value, and then an example of a entity writer. So if we include that, it will get transported into that, and that's what would be displayed. And instead of copyright, it would be copyright W preschools. So, da, da, da. so XXE payloads. Now we'll see some XXE payloads and how to s and see how they are working. The first payload we'll see is very simple. If you've read the previous task properly, then you'll understand this payload very easily. So we have a doc for place entity name feast. User info, first name, last name. So name is getting replaced with feast. And let's do it. We're using that entity on our code. Uh, we can also use XXE to read some file from the system by defining an entity and having it use the system keyword. So entity read system. And then that's the file that it's reading. Here again, we're defining an entity with the name read, but the difference is that we're setting its value to system and the path of the file. If we use this payload, then the website vulnerable to XXE normally would display the content of the file, etc. password. In a similar manner, we can use this kind of payload to read other files, but a lot of the time you can fail to read files in this manner, or the reason for failure could be the file that you're trying to read. Doesn't really make sense. Okay, 